If you have your Bibles tonight, we're going to go to a few spots. Uh, we're going to start in John chapter 16. We're in a series tonight um, that we're continuing called Our Advantage. And this is our fifth talk on the topic. The previous four are posted online. You can check it out on YouTube or go to our website, goanchorchurch.com, and find those messages there. Um, and this series called Our Advantage is a study on the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is a vast topic, and so it feels like each and every week that we're just adding a small piece to the puzzle. And by themselves, there's great value to them, but we're, we're, we're creating a larger picture, so I encourage you to go back and listen to previous, try to be faithful to catch up on the messages, because we're, we're approaching a, a large topic, and oftentimes a, a not commonly discussed topic in the church. And, uh, and so we're digging into it big time, and tonight we're adding one small piece to the puzzle. But it's a study on the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is, is triune, He's three in one, He's God the Father, He's God the Son, and He's God the Holy Spirit. And we oftentimes in church culture um, talk frequently about God the Father, God the Son, but the Holy Spirit seems to be this, this kind of side part of God that we don't talk about very much, we don't get real in-depth with, um, but we believe fully, and you can see our statement of faith, it's posted on our website, but we believe that the Holy Spirit is completely God. He, he, they are, he is not just this, this sub part of God that isn't fully God. He is God. It is God the Father is fully God. God the Son, Jesus, is fully God. And God the Holy Spirit is, is fully God. And so as we talk about having relationship with God and being followers of Jesus, this includes a beautiful relationship with the third part, the Holy Spirit. And uh, we've talked a lot about what it means to have relationship with Him, to grow in relationship with Him, and uh, how when we're living in step with the Holy Spirit, how it produces a certain set of fruit in our lives. And, and it's been an amazing study that I'm excited at where we've been and where we're going as we dig a little bit deeper. But we want you to know that the Holy Spirit is God. This is a study about growing in relationship with God through the gift that we're told we're given called the Holy Spirit. It's how we most closely can relate to God in our world because Jesus isn't walking on the planet right now. His Spirit is with us. His Spirit indwells in us as followers of Jesus and we can experience greater maturity, greater levels of relationship with the Holy Spirit and we as a church are studying that and intending to grow in that because Jesus makes the statement, again if you're in John chapter 16, that uh, he calls the Holy Spirit uh, our advantage. He says it this way in John 16, verse 7. Uh, Even though I'm going away, he says, my time with you is short, I'm going to depart. But nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. You look at this, this conversation more in depth, and as Jesus goes on, he clearly identifies that the helper or the advocate is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus uses the words that it, it's our advantage to have this growing maturity relationship, walk with the Holy Spirit. And so we want to be a church that says, well, if Jesus says that it's our advantage to, to know and to grow and to walk in the Holy Spirit, we want to, to study that, we want to know that, and we want to be a church that grows in that. Again, I know that there's a large pe- group of people here tonight, and this thing has been growing, more and more people coming, but we are still in the foundational stages of what Anchor Church is, uh, what we're building towards is really at this foundational level right now, and we have this heart and this desire as pastors here to be sure that the foundation that we're building on isn't just a simple entertainment or a certain skill set, but that we are building this church church on the power of the Holy Spirit, on this relationship with Jesus that he calls our advantage. We want to be a church that gets to operate in the advantage of having a growing, thriving, mature relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Check out this verse in 1 Corinthians 14. Um, is where we're going to look next. We've been reading this uh, most weeks as we've been on our Advantage series. We're going to read it again here tonight. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 is the most extensive teaching we get in the whole Bible on the, the function of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the expressions of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to, in this series, we're going to walk through these chapters together. We're going to learn uh, what Paul is teaching us in this. But this is specifically talking about the Holy Spirit. And then chapter 14 If we're real honest, he's talking about not just the gifts of the Spirit, but some of the functions of the gifts of the Spirit that seem uh, more difficult or more at odds within the church world. He's speaking about tongues and prophecy. And as he's speaking about not just the Holy Spirit, not just the gifts of the Spirit, but some of the more complicated or even sometimes controversial portions of the Holy Spirit or expressions of the Holy Spirit, he says this in verse 20. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. 
Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. He says that when it comes to the Holy Spirit, and when it comes to the expressions, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and even some of the more complicated aspects, or, or, or those that we seem to shy away from the most when it comes to tongues and prophecy, it says, that don't remain immature, don't remain childish, that we are supposed to grow in our understanding and our maturity uh, when it comes to matters of this kind. That we're not going to be childish and say, well, that's a little bit weird, or that's different, so I'm going to stay away. We ought to say, yeah, maybe this is different, maybe this is a bit uncomfortable, but we are not called to stay distant from it. That we are to, to draw in and grow in maturity and understanding in what it means to, to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I've said this every week. And we're going to keep saying it. The Holy Spirit is not weird. The Holy Spirit is God. But people are really weird. And people use that which is good and that which is godly and they misuse it and they can cause harm and confusion and they can cause hurt. They can misuse and abuse what was intended for good. And the religion itself has taken a lot of godly aspects, good aspects, mishandled them, misappropriated them, and caused damage and caused confusion. And the Holy Spirit, and especially the gifts of the Holy Spirit, are in that category of, of those things that the church or religion has misused, has, mis, has abused, and has caused hurt and confusion. But just because it has been misused in the past does not mean that we're just going to stay away from it. That we're going to put it in a closet and say, well, because that has the potential to cause harm or to cause confusion, we're going to stay away. If the Holy Spirit is God and the Holy Spirit, via the words of Jesus, is our great advantage, rather than staying distant from it, it is our job, it is our task to learn how to be mature about it. How to handle it, the, the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit with maturity and, and not remain childish. So we, as we are building Anchor Church, we, one of our foundational aspects is are we going to be a people who don't just stay away from what's different or uncomfortable, but we're going to take the words of Jesus, we're going to take the, this call to be mature and actually do it. Be serious about it. Learn how to handle this relationship with the Holy Spirit in a mature way and not just stay away from it because someone else has abused it in the past. So I want you to know this is where we're at. This is what we're teaching. This is the foundation we're building this church on. And uh, we're so glad that you're here learning this with us. If this isn't the way that you've orig or you initially thought or believed in regards to the Holy Spirit or gifts of the Spirit, we want to say we love you. You are welcome here. We are learning and growing what the Bible speaks uh, together. And uh, we love to have you part of this journey. And uh, we want to, to be upfront about what we believe. We don't want you to get involved for a while and then be surprised that we believe uh, in the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, this, is, this is what we're building this on. And uh, you're welcome here, even if you don't really believe that way or you're just trying to learn this with us. Uh, welcome. We're all on a journey of learning and growing and maturity together. I also want to let you know, uh, if you've got questions, ask them. Let's hang out. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's grow together in what it means to be followers of Jesus and be filled with the Spirit. Um, that being said, we're going to add one small piece to the puzzle tonight, and we're going to talk about the purpose behind the power, the purpose behind the gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit as we begin to take steps towards understanding the gifts of the Spirit and their expression within the church. Tonight, we're just talking about purpose. Would you bow your heads and pray with me, and we're going to jump into this. Father, love you so much. So grateful. Um, that you didn't just depart and leave us to ourselves to try to figure this out, but you gave us an advantage. You gave us a relationship with your Holy Spirit. I pray that we be a church that grows in maturity and doesn't remain childish in these matters, but we can understand what it means to be spirit-filled, spirit-led. And uh, we're just so grateful to be together here tonight. Let your word speak to us, challenge us, grow us, and let us experience your Holy Spirit power in a tangible way tonight. We love you. We're so grateful to be together. In your name we gather. In your name we pray. Amen. So uh, this week I, I walked into my house uh, and I brought these in from the car. Um, these are jumper cables. And yes, they're mine. And yes, I know how to use them. I know it surprises some of you. I'm not real handy, but I can use jumper cables. Uh, but I brought these into the house and uh, Finley, our, our uh, four-year-old, looks at me and says, Dad, what are those? And I was like, what do you think these are? He says, uh, I don't know. I was like, well, what would you do with these, Finley? He's like, um, you could staple things. I was like, ah, 
you might be able to. It's like, what else could you do? He's like, you could pinch people. It's like, absolutely, you could pinch people. I was like, do you have anything else that you think these could be used for? And that was about it. You could just pinch people or staple stuff. Uh, I was like, that's, that's a good idea. Maybe you could do those things. And then Berkeley, our eight-year-old, she was a little bit closer. She's like, I know what those are. I was like, what are these, honey? She says, well, if something is broken, you can hook one end to the part that's broken, hook the other end to something that's working, and it will make the broken part work. I was like, Okay, explain this to me. She's like, uh, we had a burnout light bulb in our house. She's like, well, if you take one end and you hook it to that light bulb that's burnt out, and you take the other end and plug it in somewhere else, that light bulb will work. Now, I'm not an electrician. I don't know much. I'm guessing that's dangerous. We probably shouldn't do that. Dave, can you confirm? We, shouldn't, we should not do that. Uh, a professional electrician says no. Uh, she's getting close. She's aware that there's power and the ability to, to make something that's not working work, but doing it that way would, would cause harm. It wouldn't be helpful. It would be harmful. Berkeley's only other idea is you could use it as a jump rope. I was like, yeah, we, probably, we could probably jump rope with these cables. Uh, but we all know, maybe we all know, uh, that these, these are not for those purposes. Could you use jumper cables to pinch people? to staple something, or to hook up to a light bulb in the power outlet, or jump rope. You could, but that would not, that would not be the reason that these were created. And, and in fact, this tool that could be really helpful is now not only is it unhelpful, it actually can become harmful. Now, it would be kind of crazy for us to say, well, because I'm not really sure how that can be helpful. I'm not really certain of the purpose of this tool to say, well, I'm just not going to use it anymore. And it would also be crazy of us to say, because we've heard horror stories about people hooked these up wrong and bad stuff happened and whatever happened, the car blew up, people got hurt, injured, sparks, whatever, because they were misused by somebody else, rather than using them for their intended purpose, we just stay distant from them. Like, well, I'm just going to let my car stay dead because I don't really understand how to use these or I've heard horror stories about them, so I'm going to stay distant. That's, that's crazy of us. What we ought to do is say, hey, I know that that can cause damage, but I also know it can be very, very helpful. So rather than staying negligent to how these work or the purpose behind them, it would be wise of us to say, well, before I jump into using those and potentially causing harm to myself or others, I'm going to be responsible enough to learn the purpose behind them and how to properly use them so that what can be helpful actually is helpful and doesn't become harmful. Are you following me? We have this power in the Holy Spirit. And, and it has the opportunity to be very helpful. We've studied so many different ways how the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, how it produces peace and joy. There's so many incredible advantages to growing in relationship with God and relationship with the Holy Spirit that it can bring to us. It can be very helpful. But as many people in the church world have experienced, and I don't know your story or your interaction with charismatic Pentecostal, whatever shows on TV or wherever you've been, I know that people have experienced how the power of the Holy Spirit has been misused and caused confusion and harm in your life. But we have the opportunity to say yes to what is helpful and be mature enough to say, before I really jump into this and hurt myself or hurt somebody else, I'm going to be wise enough to learn the purpose and the proper way to use this. This is our goal here tonight, is simply to understand what is the purpose to the power. Because if we do not understand the purpose, and if in our future we begin to deviate from the purpose, this is where what was intended to be helpful can become harmful. And it is very dangerous for us to begin walking down a road that we are choosing to go down as a church and, and not be aware of the purpose, because if we don't know the purpose, our tendency is to deviate, and all of a sudden it becomes harmful. But it's just as dangerous as a church to have the potential to have the power and the helpfulness of the Holy Spirit and, and remain immature or remain distant because there is potential that this could harm somebody. And because there is a chance that we could misuse this or somebody in our church could misappropriate it, then we're going to just put it in the closet and not use it. What we must understand is how to embrace and maturely use the gifts that God is giving us. We must do both. Because we don't want to be harmful, but we still want to be a people that can be helpful. So we're going to look here tonight 
at three scriptures that speak to the purpose. And again, we're not going to talk about what the specific gifts are. We're going to get to that as we move forward. But before we discuss the gifts, what they are, how to use them, we must first understand the purpose. Because knowing the purpose what will, is what will keep us in line from taking what is helpful and turning it to harmful. First verse we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, this is now the beginning of that three-chapter teaching on the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we're going to get to. We read towards the end of this teaching in chapter 14. Now, verse 7, this is towards the very beginning of introducing how to properly use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says this, A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. This is the purpose of being given a gift from the Holy Spirit. It is given to each of us so that we can help each other. We must understand right now, I know this is very simple, but we are not given gifts by the Holy Spirit to help ourselves. We are not given the power and the gifts of the Spirit so that we can feel better about ourselves, so that we can be more successful, so that we can look down on less spiritual people, so we can pair ourselves amongst ourselves. No, 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 no. The reason that any one of us is given a gift from the Holy Spirit is so that we can be helpful to others. First and foremost, it's not for me. It's a gift that can be helpful to somebody else. Now, if the Holy Spirit wants to come and, and be a part of this church in a way where he is distributing his gifts, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. He brings gifts to each and every one of us, and these gifts cause us to be helpful. This changes the entire gathering that we have every week or throughout the week when we get together because now we possess something that can be helpful. I don't know about you, but I have very little desire to be a part of a church that can teach me intellectually, but has no power to help me in my time of need. That what good is it if I can go somewhere and I can hear someone speak and someone can sing and I can learn intellectually, but when I am broken and I am hurt and I'm in tragedy and I'm in trial and I'm addicted and I'm walking through challenges in my marriages or my child is sick, when I'm in need, if my place of worship has nothing to offer me in terms of help, what good was this place? I'm not interested in being a part of a church where I can just learn but can't be helpful. And I have no desire to build a church called Anchor Church that can play good music, preach solid messages, and yet when the hurting in our community are desperate for hope and for help, we have nothing to offer. That we can gather and listen to messages and sing songs all we want, but we were placed here to be a source of help. And if we say we love our community and we love the body of Christ that's gathered here right now, what we ought to do is say, God, how can I be most helpful? How when my brother or my sister, or my friend, the person sitting the row behind me is in a place of need, how can I actually have something to offer them? And it is the Holy Spirit gives us gifts so that we can be helpful to others. And this is like, a, this could be the whole message right now. I'm going to keep talking, but we could wrap it up and leave it there. That we are giving gifts to Spirit to help. I don't know about you, but I think that should be the church. I think Anchor Church should be a place that can help each other. That when you're broken, we can help you. When I'm hurting, you can help me. When Missoula's broken, we can do something about it. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of a church that can help. Are you with me? That's a good place to say amen. Let's be a church that can help. And the most helpful we can be is being filled with the Holy Spirit, receive whatever gift he wants to give me, not to, com not to compare to the gift he gives you, but mutually say, hey, this is what he's given me. He's given you something different. We're not comparing it. We're saying, how can we link arms and both be helpful to the needs of this community? Not so I can feel better about myself, so I can help my community, so I can help this body. As much as I wish it weren't true, we're going to go through some hard times. If this is all the bigger our church gets, we're going to have some hard times in the next few years. I wish it wasn't true. There's going to be some tough times. And I hope this is a place that when you run to it, has something to offer. And what you need in those moments is not just another song and to hear a 35-minute, let's be honest, 45-minute sermon. 50 sometimes, not tonight, I hope. It's not what you need. You need someone who has the gifting and the love and the character and the fruit of the Spirit that can help you in your time of need. That's what the gifts are for. 
so that you can be helpful. Let's look at the second one in 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, we're going to start down in verse 10. This is another time we, we see this conversation about why we're given gifts. First, we're given gifts so we can help each other. And then 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Use them well. Like, do your very best. Use your gift well. Get better at it. Practice it. Be mature in it so that you can serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you'll do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. It says God gives you, he's got a variety of gifts. And he doesn't even list them right here in First Peter. It's like there's a whole bunch of different gifts. And whatever one he gives you, Use it well. Use it well. To me, this means excellence. You know how you use something well? You practice it. You exercise it. You you grow. You mature. Whatever gift God has given you, you begin to exercise it and express it and learn how to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and when he's leading you and how to speak and how to be most effective and how, how to help other people. He says, be excellent, but don't be excellent at what you're doing so that others serve you. Be excellent at your gift so that you can serve others. I think this is another way that we derail from the purpose of the gifts. We say, well, God has given me this gifting, this setting, and I'm going to get so good at this gift so that other people will want to serve me. That's some of the danger of one of the gifts God's given me to speak. Is it so easy to take this platform and say, how can I do this so well that people will keep coming and do the work that I want them to do? You are not ever, and I am not ever called to do the gift God has given me with excellence so that others will serve me, so that others will serve you. We are to take the gifts that God has given us, and we are supposed to get so good at them. We ought to get better and better and better at every gift God has given us because we're using it to serve other people. And if we want to serve better next year than we're serving this year, we better get better at our gifts. I better be a better preacher in the future, a better communicator. Whatever your gift is, we better be getting better at it because we have a heart to serve more people well. Be excellent at your gift, not so that people will be drawn to you, but so that you can serve them and serve them well. And then he uses two examples. He says, if your gift, if you have the ability to speak, speak boldly as if God were speaking through you. I think a lot of times we can say, well, what it means to have the gift of speaking is to, to stand up on a stage with a microphone. I think that is the case in some, in some, uh, some opportunities and for some people. But I think we bypass the gift that God has given you to speak. If you have the ability to speak, the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with him, when you have gifts of the Spirit, he's going to nudge you of when and where to go speak. Sometimes it's with a microphone. A lot of times it's simply walking up to somebody and saying, hey, my name's Kyle. Do you have anybody to sit with tonight? Sometimes it's saying, hey, I was reading my Bible this morning. I just read this verse and I just looked across the room and I saw you. And this might be a little bit odd to you, but I just feel like I'm supposed to share this scripture with you. I don't know what it means in your life right now, but I just believe that this is something God wants to speak to you. And you have that sense. You have that nudge. You have the Holy Spirit leading you and directing you. And then you go speak with a boldness what God has called you to speak. And then sometimes it is a setting where you know that you have an opportunity to speak clearly the hope of Jesus to somebody. Sometimes it's from a stage. Sometimes it's in a small group. Sometimes it's one-on-one over coffee. But when you have those moments and you sense that the Holy Spirit is ready to speak through you and in giving you something to say and a way to encourage or a way to challenge or a scripture to give these people, when you have that sense, he says, speak not with timidity, but speak as though God himself were speaking through you. That there ought to be this boldness, this courage, when we're filled with spirit, that I'm about to speak in a way that's going to impact, that's going to benefit the person that is listening, the person on the other side. I promise you that for, I don't know how long, over 10 years, probably 13, 14 years, before every time I have an opportunity to speak, I pray a prayer. And I pray it often before I, I, I go to a coffee meeting or meet with somebody or have a counseling session. I just pray, God, I just ask for a 
incredible confidence right now that when I step on that stage, I've got great confidence and I've got great boldness. And it's not a confidence that, that a confidence in my own gifting, my own ability, in my own studies, in the words that I've written down. It is a confidence knowing that, God, I've been sensing your Holy Spirit all week of what you want me to speak, what you want me to say. And I pray that I step on that stage and I have boldness, whether I feel confident in my preparation or not, that there is a boldness because I want to speak as though you are speaking through me. And here's the deal. If there's ever an opportunity to speak the word of God to somebody and it has the opportunity to benefit the person on the other side, why would I approach it with timidity? If I believe that God is going to use this moment to help somebody else, if it's not about me and it's not about my insecurities or what people think about me, if it is purely to serve the person on the other side, man, you step into that moment with boldness. You, you sit down at that, that coffee appointment with boldness and with courage because it's not about what this person thinks about me at the end of the day. It's am I speaking the word of God boldly to the situation that this person is in? And God has gifted you and he has gifted me with gifts of the Holy Spirit to serve the person on the other side. And we derail from the purpose when we have an opportunity to walk in these giftings, and then we start thinking, but how does this look on me? How am I perceived? No, 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 no. You weren't given a gift so that you could look better. We were given gifts so that we could serve the person across from us. So if it is speaking, speak boldly. Speak with confidence that God is speaking through you, and it's going to benefit the person on the other side. I love the next example he gives is, is, is helping. We can get all caught up in some of the more crazy speaking in tongues and prophecy. We'll get to that stuff. But I don't know if anybody's got a problem with helping other people. And I love this is where Peter goes. He says, let's, let's demystify this gifts of the Holy Spirit thing. If you have the ability to help somebody, do it. Do it well. Give everything you've got to be helpful to the people around you. Because the Holy Spirit has given you opportunities, and people cross our paths every day, that we have the opportunity to be helpful or not. He says, if you see these moments, and you have been given the ability to do something about it, help somebody. Again, I hope that we can be a church that helps, that serves, that is able to do something for our community around us in their places of need. That we can be bold. Acts 1.8 is the third place we see the purpose, the power of the for the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's to, to serve well, it's to, to help each other. And in Acts 1.8, Jesus says this: He says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And once you receive this power, it says, You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And the purpose of this power is so that you will be an effective witness to the people around you. So that you can tell the story of finding life and hope in Jesus. And you can tell that story to the people around you. And it's not going to be a dry, stale story. It's going to have power. Once again, the reason we are given the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, is for others. That we receive the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be effective in drawing other people into the hope that we have found in Jesus. Now, I don't know about you. But I'd like to be a church that helps people who have yet to find hope and freedom in Jesus experience it. I hope to be a church that can testify of what God has done in our lives, not in a dry, stale, mundane way, but in a way that draws and convicts and there is power behind it. There is power to be a witness. I hope we can be a church that actually makes a difference spiritually in the lives of people in Missoula in our surrounding area, and I hope that we make a difference around the world. It says, but the ability to be a witness comes when we receive the power. Now here's, by default, what this means. That without the Holy Spirit filling us, baptizing us, we don't yet possess the power to be this effective witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. In fact, this is why Jesus told his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because you need the power 
to be the influence I've called you to be. So we must understand that being filled with the Holy Spirit, receiving his power and the gifts that come along with it, this is what this is receiving a power that did not yet exist in our humanity on its own. And if we want to be effective, if we want Missoula to meet Jesus, if we want our friends, our family members, our community to experience the life and hope that we have found in Jesus, if we want that for them, we need a power that we do not possess on our own. Meaning that being filled with the Holy Spirit, this is not just like an option for those people in Christianity that prefer to be a little more charismatic by nature. No, this is essential for effectiveness. Now, we could be a group of people that just get together, sing songs, listen to messages, and don't really make a difference. Don't possess the power of influence. That aren't able to serve and help beyond our own natural abilities. Or, we could grow in what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we could begin to receive a power that we did not have on our own we now begin to see us reaching out and impacting lives that we didn't have a natural ability to reach on our own, and we begin to see God moving. I want to tell you, I'm really not interested in building Anchor Church on a group of people with the ability to speak well and to play music. But I'm really interested in building Anchor Church with an army of people filled with a power that we do not naturally possess. I don't know how many people call Anchor Church their home already. We've been close to 200 the last few weeks, and people come and go. There's probably, I don't know, around 250 people right now. We're not even an existing entity yet. Like, this is, this is beyond anything we imagined. But if we can launch as a church sometime soon, And begin going and and living out the vision and the dreams that God's putting inside of us. And we're banking on the skill sets of a few people. We're very limited on our influence. And if we put all of our confidence in how well can we put on a show on Sundays. We're going to be very limited. But if we've got an army of people. Who know what it's like to be filled with the power of God. To understand that they have the Holy Spirit filling them, guiding them, directing them, producing fruit inside their lives, and have given gifts that can serve, given gifts that can help, and given gifts that will bring them a power to be a witness. The influence of this church is unbelievable. And sure, there may be some uncomfortable arenas as we begin to walk in what it means to grow in the gifts of the Spirit and expressions of the Spirit. But I am not willing to start a church void of the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of our own comfort. Missoula doesn't need just the church to learn intellectually what the Bible teaches. There is enormous amounts of information out there to learn what it teaches. What Missoula needs is the power of God. They need a church that can offer help and can offer service and can bring a powerful witness to who Jesus is. This is the heart that we have for this church as we begin to get this off the ground, as we begin to move forward. we got to remember the purpose. Because the danger, the abuse, comes when we deviate from the purpose. That just like these jumper cables can be used for good, as soon as it deviates, it's, it's harmful. And as soon as we deviate from seeking the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit for the intention of helping others, we run the risk of becoming harmful. Even though we have an initial desire to be helpful to our community, it can become harmful. But when we understand the reason that the Holy Spirit fills us with power, and the reason He gives us gifts is to help and serve and to be a witness, it keeps us in line. I'm going to ask the band to join me. Here's a thought. That I understand, based on church history, based on people's experiences, based on people's own comfort, I understand the common distance from the gifts of the Spirit. 
But when I begin to look at the purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit, to serve, to be helpful to the body of Christ, to be helpful to those outside of this room right now, to have power to be a witness that we desire to be, that God's called us to be. If the ability to help, to serve, and to be a witness comes with a little bit of discomfort, what do we want more? Because if we're not seeking the fullness of the Holy Spirit, if we're not seeking to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, then what we are also not seeking is being helpful to our community. We're also not seeking ways that we can serve each other better. We're not seeking the power to make a greater eternal impact of being a witness to the people around us. I know it's not often the way we look at it, but if we are going to stay distant from the power of the Holy Spirit, we're staying distant from our, our ability to be helpful. So the question is, what do we want most? Do we actually want to be helpful? To be a greater impact in our community? Or do we want to stay comfortable? What do we actually want more? I think it's easy to say, yeah, we want to be a part of a church that's making a difference. What if you have to give up a little bit of your comfort? What if you have to be stretched a little bit to something that you aren't real educated in or you haven't spent a lot of time with or you've seen people use this in a weird way? What if you're in a hand-raising church? What? <laughs> Do I want to be more helpful or do I want to be more comfortable? And again, because we don't want you to be surprised down the road, we intend to build Anchor Church to be a helpful church, to be a powerful witness to the hope we found in Jesus, to serve our community, to help each other in times of brokenness. We want to build that kind of church. So because we intend to build that kind of church, we say yes to being filled with the Holy Spirit. We say yes to the gifts of the Spirit. We say yes to the fact that that means we're going to have to study and grow and practice and be mature and apologize when we misuse it and apologize when, when, when we didn't use it. We're going to have to learn, and it might be messy, and it might be hard, but I would rather be helpful than comfortable. One last verse I want to share with you. 1 Corinthians 4.20 it says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It's living by God's power. The kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It's living by God's power. Now, I, I don't want to throw the church at large under the bus, so I'll own this. And maybe you can relate. If I were to be honest, a lot of my life, a lot of my spiritual journey has been a lot of talk and not a lot of power. We got a lot of preaching, we got a lot of teaching, we got a lot of books, we got a lot of podcasts. But have you ever noticed there seems to be a bit of a power outage problem in the church? In my own walk with Jesus, there seems to be a power outage problem fairly often. But walking and building the kingdom of God is not just a bunch of talk. It doesn't say it's no talk. Talking is important. What we're doing, declaring and publicly teaching the Word of God is very valuable. It's important and it will be a part of what we do. But it's not just that. It's power. And because power can be uncomfortable, because power can be confusing, and because power can be misused and cause problems, we often just stay away from it and say, we will be a gathering of people with just a lot of talk and very little power. Man, I want to be a mature church that knows how to handle the power, that uses it wisely. But we can say we're building the kingdom of God and it's not just a bunch of talk. It's also a lot of power. Because again, our city doesn't just need talk. It needs the power of God. When you see a dead car, when you have a dead car, you don't walk out there and find your dead car battery and just give that battery a pep talk. You don't tell it, come on, you can do this. You can survive with no power for another day. 
you can keep existing. We know that that powerless battery has, has no ability to put life back into itself. And the best we have to offer our community, our city, when they are hurt and broken and they run to Anchor Church looking for hope, if we don't have the power of the presence of God, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, the best we have to offer them is you can survive another lifeless week and come back next week and we'll tell you the same thing. You got this. Keep going. They don't need a pep talk. But if they can come to Anchor Church and we can say, yeah, we know what it's like to have no power. We know what it's like to bring, try to bring power back to your life and not be successful. But we have an advantage where we can say, I am lifeless. I am powerless. I have no ability to find the success on my own. And we can... Like these these cables, we can plug them into the Holy Spirit of God. And even though I don't understand all of how these cables work, I know I can get a source of power to bring life to what was dead. And I don't know all of how the Holy Spirit works, but I know that we can plug into heaven, the power of heaven, and breathe life back into what was dead. And I'm not going to let the confusion of what happens in between prevent me from being helpful to the people in our city. Yeah, I don't know how it works. But I know the hope you need, you can't find on your own. And I can't just give it to you through a verbal message. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we can be a place where people can come with their lifeless, dead batteries, and they can experience the power of the Holy Spirit, and life can be brought to what was dead, I want to be that place. I want to build that church. I want to have power to be a witness, and to serve, and to help. And I hope that's your heart. That's what we have a vision for Anchor Church being. If you have the ability, would you stand with me? We have to be a place that offers more than just talk. This has to be a place that provides power. The hard part is, is uh, maybe not the hard part, but maybe the insecure part is, We know how to prepare talks. We know how to prepare songs. But it's the power that we cannot cultivate on our own. It's a desperate cry, Holy Spirit, would you show up once again? Would you do in my heart and would you do in the life of this church what I cannot do with a sermon? Would you do it on your own? Would you come and would you bring life to your church? We run a risk if we're, if we're just banking on our communication skills. There was a young man who put his faith in Jesus right up here two weeks ago, experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, was crying all over the place. He's like, I don't know what's going on. I was like, I don't know either, but I know it's the Holy Spirit. I know it's power. And I know because you've experienced the power of God, you're never going to question again if he's real. He said, here, here's the deal. If I was able to talk you into believing, someone a lot smarter than me is going to come along and be able to talk you out of it. We run a great risk if we're just banking on our communicators to talk people into believing. So there's a lot of smart people out there. There's a lot of compelling books and arguments. If it's talking people into something, this ain't going to last. But if it's introducing our community to the power of the Holy Spirit, outside of our hands, outside of our control, man, the impact will be infinite. My prayer is that we would be a people that says, Holy Spirit, I desire to be more helpful than I desire to be comfortable. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right now? I'm going to pray over our church, and I'm going to pray that we would be a people desiring to be more helpful than comfortable. We begin to walk in what it means to be filled with the Spirit, utilize His gifts. Father, right now we stand before you as your church. Hands open saying we desire to be a church that's more helpful than it is comfortable. And God, not even at church level, individually, Lord, we lift our hands saying, I choose right now that I want to be more helpful than I am comfortable. And I know that may mean saying yes to certain things that put me uneasy. It may be saying no to certain things that have brought me comfort in the past. I may have uncertainty in my future. 
maybe laying down some certain things that I held so dearly in the past, but I am choosing to be more helpful than I am comfortable. We say, Holy Spirit, would you fill us? Would we be a spirit-filled church? Would we be spirit-filled individuals? And would you bring your gifts of the Spirit upon us? Not so that we feel better about ourselves, not so that other people will serve us, but would you give your gifts to your people so that we can help others in their time of need, so we can serve this community well, so that we can speak boldly, so that we can be helpful. God, would you bring your power upon this church? Holy Spirit, would you bring your power upon the individual so that we can be a witness and an effective witness far greater than we ever could be on our own. Father, we will do our best to do what we can in the natural, but we ask for your super to bless our natural. God, we ask for a far greater impact, a far greater reach than our human abilities could ever accomplish. We want glory brought to your name. We want to see people set free, experience life and hope and purpose. We want to see the power of God and change marriages, change family curses for generations. God, we want to see, we want to see change in our community. And we're not going to bank on our ability to talk somebody into it. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you fill us? Would you bring your gifts? Would you bring your power? Lord, I ask that we would be mature in matters of this kind. Lord, I ask that we would be students of your word. We would grow and we would excel in these gifts, but we would also be studied on how to use these gifts properly, how to not deviate from the purpose, how to not take what could be helpful and become harmful. Let us be a church that is wise and mature and ready to apologize when we misuse, but that we would never put the power of the Holy Spirit back in the closet. God, I pray that we would love this city enough to say, Holy Spirit, use me, fill me, to love, to serve, to give, to be a witness.